Over the next few days, the palace says there will be several opportunities for the public to mourn, and we're expecting politicians and dignitaries from around the world to arrive in London for the Queen's funeral services. Joining us now with some insight looking forward is Victoria Murphy, an ABC News Royals contributor. Uh, Victoria, thanks so much for joining us. Of course, there's a national mourning period. The Queen will lie in state, and then a funeral will be held. But at this moment, her body remains at Balmoral. Uh, what can we expect to see in these next few days? Hi there. Yes. Um, well, what we're going to see over the next few days is a very well orchestrated plan swing into action. This is obviously something that while there is a huge amount of shock here today and we're never really fully prepared for the feeling of this happening, despite having been prepared for the logistics. But there have been plans in place for a very long time for this event. And we're going to see that swing into action over the course of the next 10 days, culminating, of course, in a state funeral at Westminster Abbey conducted by the Archbishop of Canterbury. I think we're going to see two things unfold really over the next few days and what we're seeing is simultaneously this morning this honoring the reign that has ended the woman the incredible woman who is no longer with us but also propelling us into the future we are going to see a very visible new king we are now in the reign of king charles iii and that is going to be very apparent as he now makes dresses and travels around the united kingdom so we are going to see um lots of activity happening which is honoring the old and marking the new and Prince Charles, as you said, now king, taking on the new role while mourning his mother at the same time, who not only raised him, but helped to raise his sons after the death of Princess Diana. How would you describe their relationship and what his role will be like in the next days of mourning? I think that's a very interesting point because we have dual things going on. We have a family who is grieving. This is the death of a mother, a grandmother, a great grandmother. And there are very strong personal feelings involved here, as there would be with every family. But at the, this time as well, the family is, I think, also acutely aware of the roles that they have on the public stage and the fact that the eyes of the world are now on them. And Prince Charles has been preparing, not Prince Charles, King Charles is going to get it's going to take time to get used to saying that. I think when I had a statement right. through today from the new king, it felt so strange because we have had a queen for so long and now we are saying King Charles. He has been preparing for this moment for his whole life. Um, we have seen him in action really over the past, particularly the past year, when the queen has been unable to carry out many of the functions of head of state. He has been increasingly stepping in for her. So in many ways, I think a lot of it will not necessarily feel jarring. And I think that is what the monarchy has wanted. That is what they have been planning for. But certainly Certainly, it will take time, I think, to get used to having a king, to get used to our national anthem changing, lots of things that will change, our stamps, our coins, um, and it will be very different from what we have always known. All of this, of course, will be underscored by issues within the family, as you've kind of touched on there with Prince Harry and Meghan's departure as senior royals, as well as the sexual assault allegations against Prince Andrew. How will the palace try to, to stop those things from becoming a distraction, and, and will that limit, or do you think that they'll try and limit their exposure as they did for the Queen's Jubilee? Interesting question. I think at the moment it feels very much like the focus is just so much on the Queen and also on the new King. I think when it comes to um, family feuds and dramas, I think they'll be very keen to kind of to put those things very much to one side. We know that Prince Harry travelled to Balmoral today. Um, this is a family who is together. Uh, the Queen was probably the only person who really could unite them because even as they left the royal family, Prince Harry and Meghan were still speaking very fondly of the Queen um, and making it known that they had a huge amount of respect for her. Um, and so in her death, they have come together. Um, I think they'll be very keen not to focus on any negativity and drama, and I think they'll be keen for the public not to do that as well. When it, when it comes to Prince Andrew, I think that he will... Um, be at events. I think that's what we would expect to see. But yes, I mean, a family at the moment very much united in grief, and it sort of feels that that is the mood at the moment, the overwhelming mood. And of course, there is a global outpouring of support. So many respected and loved her. But can you describe just how much she meant uh, to the British people? It is quite a difficult thing to put into words because this was she's the only queen that most of us have ever known. And I think one of the things that was so central to her reign was that it was so important to her to go out into communities. Yes, she had this grand role on the world stage where she carried out all the official functions of head of state, but for her, really, the job was about going out into communities and seeing people, meeting the public, going into their workplaces, their homes, their schools, their community centres. And she did that day in, day out, right up into the point when she really couldn't manage it anymore. And I think that's why so many people feel that they have a connection with her and why we're seeing so many people come down here tonight, because people felt that they knew her. They felt that she was really there for them. And just lastly, you know so much about the Queen. How do you think that she'll be remembered as a person and not just a monarch? 
I mean, of course, the, the outstanding thing about her reign is the fact that it was so record-breaking. But I think she was a very unique person. She had this, through her character, through the way that she conducted herself, she had this incredible diplomatic ability and this incredible ability, I think, to very gently to guide and to lead, but in a very unassuming way. Uh, the Duchess of Cambridge once described her as a gentle guidance. And I think that's what we saw. I think that she understood the importance of creating space for allow people to, to allow people to tell their stories, to allow her family members to carve out their own roles. So I think the fact that she was able to lead, but also to create space for other people to carry out their roles and for the public to tell their stories, I think that was an incredible capacity. Victoria Murphy, we thank you so much. Just tremendous reporting all day. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.